Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Very important to celebrate mothers and fathers and to protect those roles and those in their traditional aspect. We remember that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Wives are to submit to their husbands. Paul says, wives, respect your husbands, and husbands, love your wives. And this leads to godly children, to raise our children up in the way they should go so that they will not depart from it, says Proverbs, quite the promise. And so we're just celebrating what God has done today and pushing back against the tides of culture that would seek to erase those roles and they're God-ordained, God-established. God says He is our Father, and we look to Him for what fatherly love should really look like in terms of gentleness and mercy, even discipline, sometimes even wrath, uh, jealousness for His name's sake. And so it's just a, a nice reminder to say Happy Father's Day as we celebrate that. One of my favorite guys in the Old Testament makes his appearance in our reading today, Elijah. And I really appreciate Elijah because his faith is strong. He walks with God. And in chapter 18, he establishes a great victory for God, even teasing those prophets. Um, it's very amusing when he starts to mock them. Uh, where it says maybe in your scripture, maybe he's turned aside or wandered off. It's a, kind of a euphemism for using the bathroom. He's on the toilet. Maybe you have to get a little louder. But how for hours and hours those false prophets wail and lament. And then in just a few sentences, Elijah shows that his God, our God, is the real God. That's why it can be said, you are God in heaven, and here I am on earth, so I'll let my words be few. And Jesus says, there's no reason to give in to vain babbling. God hears, and if we are earnest in our appeal, he hears us. But even so, chapter 19, he has great distress. He's worn out, he's tired, and he begins to uh, flee. He gets discouraged, and he even just prays to die because he's tired of of this work that he's doing. And so that, that reminds us that even when we're in the midst of a good work and a strong work, sometimes we get worn out. But God's provision and promise to Elijah gives me hope too. He encourages him. He gives him sustenance, just like he gives to us his daily bread his word, his will, he feeds us. And so just like Elijah, we need to stand strong. Listen to what Paul says to the Colossians. Be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elements of the world rather than Christ. And then he goes on to give these great truths. And so, church, I just want to encourage you today, hold fast to the real truth of God. Don't be discouraged. Don't give way to doubt. But trust God, holding on to him, even in the tides of a culture that increasingly despises his reality. We will hold fast. We'll do it together.